The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices everybody's talking about. Have you discovered this marvelous new way to buy cheese in slices at your food store? Kraft Deluxe Slices are different from any sliced cheese you've ever had in your life before. They're perfect slices, cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft. A little later on, I'll tell you all about the amazing new Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, three weeks from today, the great Gildersleeve's niece, Marjorie, is to be married. And things are beginning to move at a fast tempo around the water commissioner's house. By George, I love a wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Kelsey! Yes, Bertie? Are you home? Am I home? No, Bertie, I'm still at the office. Well, when you get home, there's something... Hey, you here. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Gilsey, are you spoofing me? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) What is it, Bertie? The wedding invitations just came. Oh, they did? Yes, so here they are, all engraved. Well, good. And here's the bill. Let's see. Oop. It must be engraved in solid gold. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's open them up, huh? Bring, Marjorie's wedding invitations, Leroy. Yeah, let me see them. How many are there? Well, we ordered about 200. Yes, sir. Everybody in Summerfield wants to see Miss Marjorie married. 200? Gosh, they'll have to put bleachers in the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone we send invitations to isn't supposed to attend the wedding, Leroy. They're just supposed to send presents. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilsey's gonna get his money back somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bertie. <laughs> Let me see what the invitation says. Don't handle them, Leroy. We don't want strawberry jam all over them. Okay. Hmm. Feel that engraving. It says, uh, Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, that's me, requests the honor of your presence at the marriage of his niece, Marjorie. That's Marge. <laughs> to Mr. Walter J. Thompson. That's Bronco. Yes. <laughs> On Wednesday, the 10th of May. What's going on, Anki? Your wedding invitations just arrived, my dear. Oh, they did? Yeah, you're going to get married May 10th. <laughs> I know, Leroy. Gosh, just think, Marge, in three weeks you'll be a ball and chain. Yeah, Leroy? Here <laughs> comes a bride, fair, fat, and wide. <laughs> oh, stop it, Leroy. See how she waddles from side to side. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uncle yeah, don't you worry, my dear. You won't waddle going down the aisle. I wonder if I will. Bronco will be here in a minute. I can't wait for him to see the invitations. They look terribly expensive, Auntie. Hey, why does the bride have to pay for everything? Ah, very elementary, my boy. If the groom had to pay, he wouldn't have enough left to start housekeeping. You know, I'm afraid this is just the beginning, Uncle Mort. Oh? There'll have to be a cake and things for the reception. Well, I've been putting a little aside for that. Oh, then there'll be the flowers for the church. Yeah, we need plenty of flowers. And an organist and a soloist. Hmm. Say, why don't I save some money and sing the solo myself? (laughs) I could run around behind the church in time to take you down the aisle. Sure, you could use my bicycle. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, Unky. All right, I just hope my money holds out. Oh, and that isn't all, Uncle Mort. There's more? Well, we have to furnish dresses for the bridesmaids. Zeke. I wonder if I'm eligible for the Marshall Plan. (laughs) Uh, Well, at least we won't have to buy your wedding dress. Anki, uh? are you sure Mother's dress is here? No, it must be. Well, Bertie and I have searched the attic, and if it's here, it must be in that old trunk of yours. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Marjorie, let's go up and find it, huh? Yeah. Oh, that must be Bronco. I can't go now, Anki. Why not? Bring Bronco along. He can move the trunk. Uncle Mort, the groom can't see the bride's dress before the wedding. Oh? Oh, for corn's sake. The groom doesn't do nothing. He doesn't pay for nothing. He don't even have to look at nothing. Do you <laughs> Is this the trunk, Unc? 
That's it, Leroy. Now, if I can just squeeze past Aunt Hattie's dress form. <laughs> Pardon me, Aunt Hattie. <laughs> Made it. She's getting bigger every year. Where's the key, Unc? I've got it. Hinges are kind of rusty. Sounds just like Judge Hooker getting up off the bench. <laughs> I'll lift the tray out, Unc. All right, my boy. Moth. <clears throat> hey, what's this tight with a blue ribbon? One of Marge's curls? Oh, no, that's not quite the right color. I imagine it's yours. Mine? That sissy curl? Of course. You're a very cute little boy, Leroy. <laughs> Here's a note pinned to it. Yeah? Throckmorton's curl at age five. <laughs> Guess you were pretty cute too, Ugg. <laughs> Never mind, Leroy. Let's look for the wedding dress. What color is it, Ugg? White and lacy. Let's see. Boxes. My old fur mittens. A comic valentine. <laughs> look at that, Leroy. <laughs> well, I guess it's not in this trunk. Oh, Here's a picture of your mother wearing the dress, though. Yeah? Yeah. This was taken on her wedding day. <sighs> My little sister. Gosh, she's pretty. Yeah. And Marjorie's just like her. What's this? Oh, a letter she wrote when she sent me the picture. Look at that postmark. June 17th, 1929. 1929? Gosh, I wasn't even born yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Leroy. Let's see what the letter says. She wrote better than me and Marge, didn't she? Yeah, beautiful hand. Dear Throckmorton, I thought you'd like to have a picture of your sister on the happiest day of her life. Marge feels the same way. Why does everybody feel so happy when they get married? Now, Leroy, I'm reading your mother's letter. Oh, sure. I suppose we won't see each other for a long, long time. But I keep telling myself our family isn't breaking up. I'm just starting a new one. Charles and I want two boys and two girls. Well, she had one boy and one girl. You and Marjorie, Leroy. Yeah. Let's see what else she says. It'll be the joy of my life to watch my children grow up and see them as happily married as I am. Gosh, did Mother say that? Yeah, she did. What's the matter, Unc? Nothing, my boy. <laughs> Look, Marge, I've got our honeymoon trip all figured out. I drew a map on this piece of paper. Yellowstone Park, Grand Canyon, a package of cheese... No, Marge. Now, that part is Mother's grocery list. And the map is down below. Oh, Bronco. Yeah. I can't wait until May 10th. Marjorie! In the living room, Anki. Oh, Bronco, you'll have to go. Uncle Mort's coming with my wedding dress. Gee, the groom sure gets pushed around. Just a minute, Anki. Bronco isn't supposed to see it. Oh, hello, Bronco. Hello, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Marjorie, I couldn't find your mother's dress. It wasn't in your trunk? No, Leroy and I searched everywhere. Oh. That's too bad, Marge. Yeah. Look, Bronco. Marjorie would look just like this. Is this a picture of her mother? Mm-hmm. <gasps> isn't that a beautiful dress, Bronco? Oh, it looks almost exactly like one I saw at Hogan Brothers. You saw a dress like this, my dear? Yes, in the Oval Room, Unky. Oval Room? Guess I haven't been there. The only rooms I've been at Hogan Brothers were square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> She's going to be a fine son-in-law. <laughs> it had a neckline like this with little puff sleeves... And it was all white satin and chantilly lace, just like this picture. Well, good. I'll go right down and get it. Oh, no, Unky. I wouldn't let you do that. Why not? If we can't find your mother's dress, we'll get the nearest thing to it. But, Unky, this is a very expensive dress. Oh? Marge is right. You've got to start watching expenses, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'm going to start right after the wedding. Poor Unky. You know, I've been figuring out what this wedding is costing you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was lying awake the other night worrying about it. You were? I said to myself... Mr. Gildersleeve's furnishing the flowers, buying invitations, paying for music, giving a reception. Well, yes. And what are my parents furnishing? Me. 
<laughs> well, what more could any girl want? Oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, if you two will excuse me, I have to get downtown. I've got some things to do. Unky. Yes, my dear? You're not going down and look at that wedding dress, are you? Me? No. If I have to buy one, I'll get something inexpensive. After all, I'll only be wearing it once. Well, walking down that aisle is a pretty important occasion, isn't it, Bronco? Yes, sir. I can't wait until May 10th. <laughs> uh, uh, see you later, Uncle. <laughs> Nothing but women around here. Must be getting close to the Oval Room. For some reason, I don't feel very comfortable in this end of the store. Hope nobody sees me. Yelda! Oop. <laughs> Judge Hooker. Judge, what are you doing up here among the wedding gowns? Pretty dangerous for an eligible bachelor like you. Not as dangerous for me as it is for you, Gildy. You're a fatter catch than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Old goat, stop cackling, Horace. Everybody's looking at you. As a matter of fact, I was cutting through to the three-quarter length socks. What are you doing here, Gildy? Well, I'm down here to buy a wedding dress for Marjorie, Judge. Why don't you come along? What's the matter? Afraid to walk into the Oval Room alone? Well, there are a lot of women in there. Very well. I'll accompany you. Beautiful room, isn't it? Yeah. Quiet, too. Thick carpets. Yeah. Can hardly see my shoe tops. <laughs> Say, Gildy. Look over there. You look over there, Judge. I'm looking over here. What? Models. My, is that a wedding gown? I think so, but let's keep moving, huh? Are you gentlemen interested in wedding gowns? Uh, yes, indeed, miss. At least my niece is. Oh, well, do you like the one being modeled? That blonde wedding gown? I mean... <laughs> Gilda, whatever happened to Marjorie's mother's wedding dress? Uh, we can't find it, Judge, but I'm here to get one just like it. Miss, yes? you have a dress here that my niece rather liked. Oh, can you describe it? Well, uh, it's um, white satin, has a neckline sort of like this, and uh, little puffy sleeves, and there's a lot of uh, chantilly lace. Chantilly lace. There's nothing like the fragile gossamer beauty of chantilly lace. Like a fleecy cloud hovering around the bride. Oh, brother. <laughs> All right, Judge, come out of the clouds. Uh, you know the one I have in mind, miss? I'm sure I do. It's quite expensive. It is? Gildy, aren't you going overboard on Marjorie's wedding? Well, oh, Horace, it's taken about all I've saved for a rainy day, but what the heck? Let's spend it for a sunny day. That's a nice attitude, Gildy. Of course, I'll have to cut down on cigars and lunches for a little while. But at a time like this, what's another 50 bucks for a wedding dress? Here's the dress. Isn't it lovely? Oh, that's it, all right. Nice long train. Beautiful. It's $135. A hundred and Zeke? <laughs> no, $135. Uh, he heard you, miss. Uncle Mort. Yeah, Marjorie. Well, hello, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Uncle Mort, I thought I'd find you here. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle, you've spent too much money already. I forbid you to buy that dress. Well, I had no idea it was that expensive. May I show you something else? No, thanks, miss. We're just cutting through to the three-quarter length socks. <laughs> I hope they're out of them. See you later, Marjorie. <laughs> Come along, Judge. <Jeff. laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. Ladies, right now in your grocer's dairy case, there's a wonderful surprise package for you. It's a neat square package that looks as though it holds a solid square of cheese. But this amazing package holds eight big sandwich-sized slices of delicious pasteurized processed cheese. They're the wonderful Kraft Deluxe Slices, cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft. Yes, right after this fine processed cheese is pasteurized, it's cut into generous slices by a marvelous new Kraft invention. Then these slices are wrapped, eight to each neat half-pound package, and sealed. That's right, sealed by Kraft. You can be sure each Kraft Deluxe cheese slice is clean and sanitary. You can be sure each Kraft Deluxe slice is perfect, too. No slivers or broken pieces, but each big slice a golden square of wonderful eating. 
With Kraft Deluxe Slices handy, you can fix tempting snacks and sandwiches or even a fancy cheese tray easier and more quickly than ever before. And whatever you make with Kraft Deluxe Slices will be extra delicious because this cheese is so rich and mellow-tasting. You can get Kraft Deluxe Slices in four favorite Kraft kinds, Kraft American, Pimento, Swiss, and Sharp Old English brand. So pick your favorite tomorrow. And when you see amazingly neat packages marked Kraft Deluxe Slices in your grocery's dairy case, remember this. You actually get eight big, perfect, easy-to-separate slices of cheese. Take a package home and see for yourself. Once you discover convenient, delicious Kraft Deluxe Slices, you'll never buy cheese slices any other way. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. By George, Marjorie's a sensible girl. Not letting me spend $135 I don't have. Still, we have to have a wedding gown. Hello, PV. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? You can give me a half dozen cigars, PV. Very well. And charge them till after the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Only kidding, my friend. But I'll have to admit this wedding's getting pretty expensive. Peavy, you've got no idea how expensive a wedding can be. Well, I should. I married Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm still paying. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about, Peavy, is the expenses before the wedding. It's costing me $500 to give the bride away. My, my. But it's going to be a nice church wedding. We're going to have an organ, a soprano, and everything. We have everything but the wedding dress. You can't have a church wedding without a dress. Well, Marjorie planned to wear her mother's, but we can't find it. And guess what one like it costs at the Oval Room, Peavy? I hate to think. A hundred and thirty-five dollars. You don't say. Yes, sir. <laughs> Too steep for me, Peavy. After all, a girl only wears a wedding dress once. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? Mrs. Peavy's cousin Ida used hers six times in, in five different states. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Cousin Ida would like to travel. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And by the way, Mr. Gildersleeve, there's no reason why Mrs. Peavy's wedding dress shouldn't be used again. Do you suppose Marjorie would wear it? Marjorie? It's a beautiful dress, and as you say, you've been put to a lot of expense. Well, I don't know. I'd consider it quite an honor to have Marjorie wear that dress, and so would Mrs. Peavy. Well, by George, that's nice of you. I'm sure Marjorie would be honored to wear it. Well, I'll phone and have Mrs. Peavy get it ready for Fine. her. Fine. You think it'll fit Marjorie? Well, when Mrs. Peavy and I were married, she was about Marjorie's size. I remember carrying her across the threshold. <laughs> <laughs> I got tangled up in the train. Oh, <laughs> well, does the dress have a train, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, that dress has everything but a bell and a whistle. <laughs> Good. I'll pick it up. Uh, Marjorie! Yes, Uncle? I've got a surprise for you. Well, it's something nice that Mr. and Mrs. Peavy sent you. A wedding present? Why don't you open it and see? All right. Oh, by the way, Yankee, I almost forgot. Bronco's mother called. Mrs. Uh, Thompson? Yes, she's on her way over. Oh, fine. What's she coming over for? Well, she didn't say. But please, Yankee, when she gets here, don't start an argument. Marjorie, nobody has to start an argument with Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> well, be nice to her. All right, I'll be so sweet to her, she won't even recognize me. Well, let's open the box, Yankee. Yeah, here, wait a minute. I'll break the string for you. I can hardly wait to see what it is. Well, yeah, it's something that'll make you very, very happy. Oh, somebody's wedding dress. It's yours, my dear. The Peavies want you to wear it. Well, that's awfully sweet of the Peavies, Uncle Mort, but I can't wear this. Why not? Hold it up. You see? It has a train, everything but a bell and a whistle. <laughs> but, Uncle, it has one of those old-fashioned bustles. Say, it has, hasn't it? Peavy didn't mention the caboose. <laughs> We could uncouple that, my dear Wedding dresses don't grow on trees, you know Oh, that's probably Mrs. Thompson I'll put the dress away I'll take it 
Yeah, I've got it, Bertie. <laughs> well, Mother Thompson. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> nice to see you. Yes, indeed. Won't you come in? Thank you. My, you're looking fine today, Mrs. Thompson. Fit as a fiddle. Bull, that is. <laughs> is that, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, I said you're looking fine. You look well, too. <laughs> Well, thank you This is quite a surprise seeing you As they say, if I'd known you were coming, I'd have baked the cake <laughs> Is Marjorie here, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yeah, 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 she's upstairs She'll be down in a minute Yes, indeed, it's nice to see you, Mrs. Thompson What are you doing these days? Keeping busy, are you? Yes, I'm keeping busy Well, good Are you keeping busy? Me? <laughs> yes, indeed, I'm the water commissioner, you know I know That's why I wondered yep. <laughs> I wonder what you meant by that Oh, hello, Mrs. Thompson. Hello, Marjorie, my dear. I can't stay. I just dropped by to leave this package for you. Oh, for me? Well, Bronco came home and told us how high the wedding expenses are running, and this is something I'd like to do to help out. Isn't that nice? I brought you my wedding dress. Oop. Not another one. What was that, Mr. Gilsey? Uh, I said, uh, I'll bet it's a lovely one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Thompson. Don't mention it, my dear. I know that a wedding dress is a very difficult thing to get. Not around here, it isn't. <clears throat> uh, won't you come into the living room and sit down, Mrs. Thompson? Thank you, my dear. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oop! Right on my corn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope that isn't somebody else with a wedding dress. Judge! Oh, how we danced on the night we were wed. <laughs> What's in that package, Jolson? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, Gilly. This is my sister Clarissa's wedding gown oh. for Marjorie. <laughs> I knew it. But, Judge! Now, now, Gilly, old friend, this is something I want to do for you and Marjorie. I drove over to my sister's house at Atherton, and Clarissa and I spent three hours burrowing in the attic. Yes. Now, but... Gildy, I insist. If... Since Marjorie couldn't find her mother's dress, I knew she'd like to be married in a dress furnished by an old friend. Uh, how can you refuse a sentimental old goat? <laughs> Who is it, Unky? Uh, hello, Marjorie. Oh, hello, Judge. Uh, Marjorie, we don't have to let Mrs. Thompson know, but the judge brought you his sister's wedding dress. But... It's beautiful, Marjorie. Eggshell crepe de chine with a forget-me-not bodice and a petty point wimple. Y oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, well, thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. <laughs> <sighs> I guess Marjorie's crying because she's so happy to have a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've been here about 15 minutes. Bertie, is Marjorie in her room? I noticed her door is closed. Yes, sir. She's been up there most all day. She has? There's a girl with too many wedding gowns on her hands. You're so right, Bertie. And none of them hers. Well, people are trying to be nice. Yes, sir. But she don't want no secondhand dress, Mr. Gilsleeve. You're so right, Bertie. She wants a dress of her own. I know, Bertie. I'm going up and have a talk with her. Marjorie! I'm in my room, Unky. And may I come in? If you like. Oh, looking out the window, eh? Marjorie, Bertie and I were just talking about the wedding dresses. What am I going to do, Unky? Well... I don't want to offend the Peavies. No, I know you don't. And the judge was a dear to drive all the way over to his sister's to borrow her dress. Yeah. And I can't refuse Mrs. Thompson. Yeah, I thought of that. <clears throat> it's not a good idea to offend your mother-in-law. <laughs> Marjorie... Yes, Unky. Why don't you go up in the attic and take one last look for your mother's dress? But you and Leroy were up there only yesterday. Well, we could have missed it. I might have looked right at it and never seen it. Run along, my dear. <laughs> up there quite a while. Hey, Unc, isn't it time 
time to eat. I'm hungry. Leroy, you're always hungry. We don't eat till all the family is here. Where's Marge? She's keeping a little kid from getting his vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> She's up in the attic, my boy, looking for her mother's wedding dress. How can she find it if we couldn't? Well, maybe she has better eyes than we have. <laughs> She must have seen a mouse. She must have seen something. Unky. Oh, Unky. Yes, my dear. Unky, look what I found. Well, you found your mother's dress. What's going on out here? Bertie, she found the dress. Hold it up to your shoulders, Marjorie. All right. Oh. Oh, it's absolutely the most beautiful wedding dress a girl ever had. It sure is, Miss Marjorie. Yeah. Yeah, that's keen. How'd we miss it, Unc? Yeah, Leroy, let's go wash for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Bertie, dinner will have to wait. I've got to try it on. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you sure love that dress, don't you? Oh, yes, Bertie. I love it just as much as if it were Mother's. Ain't it your mother? Look, Bertie. Land alive. Hogan Brothers. A hundred and thirty-five dollars. <laughs> we mustn't let Unky know he forgot to take off the price tag. hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. For a grand surprise when you're shopping tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for the newest thing in cheese slices. You'll see a neat square package marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. It's such a neat package, you'll be amazed to discover it holds eight big sandwich-sized slices of cheese. They're Kraft Deluxe Slices, cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft right after this fine processed cheese is pasteurized. Every slice is perfect, easy to separate, and protected by Kraft all the way to your kitchen. Tomorrow, get mellow good Kraft Deluxe Slices in your favorite Kraft kind. Kraft American, Pimento, Swiss, and Sharp Old English brand. For quick and easy cheese snacks and sandwiches, you'll be delighted with Kraft Deluxe Slices. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. Uh, what can I do for you today, Mr. Gildersleeve? I brought your wife's dress back, Peavy. Marjorie's very grateful to you both, but she found a wedding dress up in the attic. Oh, her mother's? Well, uh, yes, Peavy. Uh, one I bought for her mother. Oh, that's nice. A memory like that's a fine thing at a wedding. Yeah. I think I'll have some lunch, Peavy. Very yeah, well. Would you like the blue plate, 60 cents? 60 cents? It's the businessman's special. Yeah. No, thanks, Peavy. Just give me a 10 cent sandwich and a glass of water. <laughs> What kind of a lunch is that? The water commissioner's special. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here in America, most of us have plenty to say about what's wrong with our economic system. And we have the right and the freedom to say what we think. Certainly our economic system isn't perfect, but let's remember this. It's provided more jobs, shorter working hours, better pay, better homes, more to eat, more downright good living than any other system in the world. By all pulling together, we can make this system work even better for all of us. How? Right for the free booklet, the Miracle of America, which explains what you and I can do. The address, Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. Next, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.